access control capability in Security Command Center allows organization administrators to grant fine-grained access to the assets and findings surfaced in Security Command Center. This feature is relevant for many use cases, including sensitive applications or compliance regimes that require strict access controls, as it lets you isolate cloud resources and restrict employee access to only those they need to do their jobs. Access control at the folder and project level is available to Security Command Center Premium customers. In this video, we'll walk through how to grant granular access control to assets and findings in your organization and demonstrate the experience from the end user's perspective. Starting in the organization view of the Security Command Center, you can see this example organization has thousands of assets, and similarly, it has many findings. Rather than providing organization-wide permissions, administrators can use access control to limit the view or edit permissions in Security Command Center to specific folders and projects. We'll now show how to grant users access to specific folders or projects in Security Command Center using the Cloud Console. In the Project Selector dropdown, choose the project or folder to which you would like to provide scoped access. In this case, we're selecting a project. Then, head to the IAM landing page, which you can find with the left-hand navigation menu. Search for the user's email address and click to edit. Then add the Security Center admin editor, viewer, or one of the many additional Security Center roles based on your user's needs. Then click Save. The permissions are now applied and live for your user. Now, let's switch over to view the console logged in as the user. As you can see, when the user tries to access Security Command Center for the organization itself, they will get a permission denied error because they do not have permissions at the organization level. Using the project dropdown, we'll select the target project to which they were granted Security Command Center access. We'll now see Security Command Center is scoped to the specific project, including only the assets and findings that are associated with the project. For example, by selecting the Assets tab, we can now see that the number of assets has decreased from the organization view we saw earlier, as now, these are only the assets that reside within this project. When looking at projects, we can only see the specific project and not others within the organization. We'll click on a specific asset, such as this bucket, to expand the asset details. Take note of the new canonical name field, which contains the asset's actual parent project ID in its name. Now, let's head to the Findings tab. Again, we can only see findings that are associated with the assets contained in this project, rather than the organization-wide findings. Note, if we had shared access at the folder level, we would be able to see assets and findings associated with all projects within that folder. Just as we saw earlier in the Assets tab, we can see that the details for a finding includes the new canonical name field, which identifies the parent project associated with the finding. All functionality across dashboards is scoped as per the access controls defined. For example, in the Overview tab, we continue to see the charts and reports for findings within the scope of this project. And we also see only the vulnerabilities associated with this project. The Settings page, however, does require organization-level permissions in order to be viewed and edited, because Security Command Center settings always apply to the entire organization. Congratulations! You're now equipped to use Access Control in Security Command Center to restrict users to manage assets and findings within an assigned scope.